My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Yep, so I am Greg Dickerson, um, at the Greg Dickerson, tuning in from Charlottesville, Virginia. Awesome, awesome. Let's dive into it. Um, you have obviously have a lot of uh, content, IGTV, on your channel. And you talk about a lot of different topics. What do you think is the most important success principles that has affected you the most to have this kind of success that you've had so far? Personal, professional development, self-development, and mindset. It all starts there. So how did you start with that? Give us the best example. And, and if somebody has never been in that space, how did they get started? So I didn't go to college. I went uh, in the Navy right out of high school. And, you know, short background on me. I've started in well, companies. I've done a quarter million dollars in real estate deals on my own. And then I've done four or five hundred million uh, real estate deals with others, um, as well as other business ventures and things like that. So uh, for a guy like me that grew up, you know, working class family, my dad was in the Navy. He was enlisted, came out an officer. So he built everything you know, through the military ground up, career military guy. My mom was a career uh, uh, worker. She worked with Blue Cross. So no entrepreneurs at all in my family. I was the only one and uh, just kind of a natural born entrepreneur. And when you go through um, life, you know, as a W-2 employee, uh, you know, just a person and, you know, get out in the workforce, uh, you know, I didn't have that formal education. But I had to supplement that somehow. So I got some really good business and discipline education through the military. Um, after the military, I worked in restaurants and construction. I, I got some really good business training in the restaurant world. But that's where my mind was open to personal and professional development. Um, they, uh, one of the companies I worked with had us read some books. So I worked for them in their management training program. They gave you books. And uh, they gave us the One Minute Manager series. They gave us Managing by Harold Janine. gave us uh, High Output. High Output Management by um, um, uh, Andrew. I can't remember his name. Anyways, he was another CEO of Andrew at the time. Greg, and, uh, I got a question for you. Are you on your data or are you on your Wi-Fi? Um, I am on Wi-Fi. Might want to change that because I'm missing a lot of the words that you're saying and I want to grab everything. There we go. Let's see if you can change that. We get a lot of feedback or something. No, it's not a feedback. It's just that every every sentence I'm missing two words. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Do you want to change it to your data? Maybe your data will be stronger. Yeah, let me switch over. Yeah, switch over. We'll give you a second. Switch over. Let's see if that works better. Yeah, you guys, give us a second. Let's see if we can get him back. Let's see if he... This one. All right, he left. Let's see if we can get him back. All right, give us a second, you guys. Let's see if we can get Greg. All right, Greg, I send you a request again. There we go. Let's try with data. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I switched over to data. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's much, I think it's much better. But go ahead, you were con continuing. You were saying uh, success development. You, you talked about a little bit of your background and your yeah. father. And you were the first one in the family. Got it. Yeah, first entrepreneur in the family, went in the Navy right out of high school, so formal education. So I had to train myself. I had to educate myself. I went to work for a restaurant corporation. And in the management training program, I had to read a series of books. I'm a manager, uh, managing by Harold Janine, good management by Andrew Grove. Um, and then uh, the disk profiling system, uh, you know, back in the day. Yeah. So we studied all that. So that opened my mind to what the world of personal professional development could do for you. Those were many books, but they were also leadership. So as I started researching, I found uh, Jim Rohn, I found Tony Robbins, I found Napoleon Hill, Norman Vincent Hill. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I started my entrepreneurial journey, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And uh, what I got out of that was build businesses, cash flow to invest in other assets. So I went down that road. But I just, I just have a voracious appetite for learning and for self-development, professional development. So I'm one of the people that all the way through, going all the way back, you know, Walkman, cassette tape, Walkmans, uh, they were all personal, professional, uh, 
um, development from all of the sales trainers, business trainers, all kinds of stuff, um, investing, multifamily, like that. And then it was CDs, right? When that came out, and I had nothing but personal professional development, always pouring into myself, and then reading books. It works in every area of your life, business, investing, success, but also uh, personal health. So I had gotten to a point to where, you know, I'm skinny now, but, you know, I went through a period in my life where I was 80 pounds overweight, uh, you know, lifelong smoker, and through the mindset shift that I learned how to do, I quit smoking in 2004, lifelong smoker. And, you know, I was probably 40 at the time. Back a day, my entire life since I was old, I grew up smoking cigarettes in the house with my family. Um, and I'd gotten about 80 pounds overweight, I quit smoking and lose weight at the same time. That's mindset. You know, that's personal development that teaches you how to overcome you know, lifelong habits like that and shed weight like that in such, you know, in a year's time to be able to get off moving forward. I had to have a complete mindset. And I didn't even know what that was about or how to do it. And then, you know, those principles cross over into all of the areas, you know, of your life, you know, faith, you know, faith, everything. Love it. Love it. So what's your favorite self-help book or top two? Top two are thinking, growing, thinking. Norman Vincent Peale, Hill, it all starts there um, with their books. And then you know, there's tons of other books. Of course, the Bible, you know, Proverbs has a ton of wisdom in it. Um, and there's other books, but that's the personal professional development book in the Bible. Uh, and there's other stories, but uh, probably those two were the top that really created the mindset. Uh, and then, you know, I love Tony Robbins' older stuff. You know, um, uh, Waking the Giant Within was a great one. Uh, he had a couple of other ones. Zig Ziglar, I love Zig Ziglar. Jim Rohn, but you know Napoleon Hill and Norman Vincent Hill are the two foundation, you know, foundational books that everything is built on. Yeah, I love it. So here's my question: When you want to become an entrepreneur, what are a couple of the warnings you would give to somebody? Let's say you didn't know them, you weren't worried about their their feelings getting hurt, and you were going to give them the truth honest, raw, you know, just letting them know what they're about to go and encounter. Well, how would that conversation go? Because I feel like a lot of people, especially on Facebook and Instagram, oh, it's so easy. You could do this in six months. I don't know that many people that make six-figure income within the first year of entrepreneurship unless they're doing something abnormal that I haven't experienced. So I don't think it's that simple. It takes hard work, energy, effort. You know, you got to go through the self-growth. If that was the case, then everybody would be doing it. And then I'm going to come back. You talked about Bible. If Bible was so good, then why are we still having so many people read it and not be? Because when I go to churches, I see some of the broke people in the church. So if Bible was that good, what, 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 what's the missing link? Are we just looking at it as a religious book? Or can we? how do we take that book and apply it into business? Because if it's good, then why are we reading Thinking Go Rich? Why are we not all reading Bible? Yeah, so we'll get back to that one. So your first question on, on you know, business startup for people wanting to go entrepreneurship. So every business that I started hit figures very quickly. So that's not hard to do. That's very easy to do. Six figures is not. Seven figures is different. And keeping it is the most important thing. So it's not that hard to get there. Stay in there and keeping it. Is hard. So, um, but number one, it requires. So what happens, what stops a lot of people is just that fear of stepping out. Steady paycheck. All you got to do is show up. When you're an employee, you employee, all you got to do is show up. You know, and if you do an adequate job, especially in the military, you can't get fired. You just show up. You know, uh, and in most corporations, it's kind of like that. You really don't have to worry about it. just kind of do your thing. You don't have to put effort in. You don't have to be that dedicated or that committed for your skills. You can just coast right along. Years later, you know, maybe depending on what company you're at, maybe retire. Now, I'm not so sure. You know, in the last 20 years, that whole philosophy of get a good job, retire, it's kind of gone away. So when you take that entrepreneurial journey, what you need to understand is it's not hard, but it is a process. And you've got to you got to constantly educate yourself. You've got to constantly pour into yourself, develop yourself. You can never stop learning, never stop growing. You become responsible for everybody else around you. So number one, what a lot of people don't understand, when you're an entrepreneur, you're a so that's, that's what you're doing. You're serving, first and foremost. You're serving a market. You're serving your team. You're serving your suppliers, your vendors, your clients. You're, you know, everybody else. 
foremost. A lot of people think, I want to be an entrepreneur. I can work hard. We can do whatever I want. There are some businesses where you can do that. You know, if you know how to market and do those types of things, you can do that. Really, you can make 100 grand a year. You can work a couple hours a week selling stuff on. You don't even have to have a product. You can be an affiliate marketer. That is real. That people are doing that, but you got to have a skill set. And in order to get that skill set, work, you got to train, you got to practice, you got to educate yourself. So, in order to step out there on your own, you know, that's what it takes. It takes knowledge, skills, and a, a market of what you do. And what I teach a lot of people how to do is to start a business where they can make 100 grand a year and replace their W 2 job. And, you know, if you're something in the workforce, you can generally get paid for that on your own. So if you've got a skill set um, that has value in the marketplace and work, value in the marketplace, I'm not sure. You just got to be able to understand what that is, who your market is, who, you know, ideal clients are. So, so that's what I tell people is just know what you're doing, have a plan, make sure you got a skill set and be prepared to do whatever it takes morally, legally, and ethically to be successful. You got to know what you want. You got to want it bad enough, and you got to be willing to sacrifice and do whatever it takes, especially in the early stages. So, uh, in, in a lot of the business, you know, the early stage of startup, man, you got you got to work. You got to put the time and the effort in. But once you get rolling, you get the system set. Uh, you know, it's a little easier. And then now, the internet, things you can do on the internet as a coach, uh, selling products, uh, selling you know, uh, goods and services, teaching people skills. If you're, if you're a dance instructor, if you're a martial arts instructor. Uh, if you're a uh, you know uh, athletic coach or trainer, you know you can sell those those services and those trainings online. There's all kinds of platforms now where you can do that and make a hundred grand. Not that hard, but you got to know how to market. You got to know how to package that, and you got to know how to present it. the right offer to the right people at the right time, the right packaging. In the you know, so that's how that works. Now, second part of your question about the Bible, it's like anything else, you can take a hundred people. And Give them, you know, all things give them equal. Start all out with the same thing, the same resources. Give them all those two books I mentioned. They can grow rich, the whole thing, and give them each a hundred grand. Set them off and, and and let them go. Maybe you might be successful. You know, so what it all comes back to one is desire. Okay, you got to want it bad enough. You got to want to work in. You got to want to get out there and make it happen. You know, the 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 world full of geniuses that you know you know. You know, the world's full of talented people. You know, Captain Coolidge had a, had a quote about that. You know, unrewarded genius, you know, talent, things like that. Those aren't the things that make the difference in the world. An instruction manual, you know, talents, you know, gifts, those types of things. You've got to do something with it. So um, I talk a lot about mindset. I talk a lot about, um, you know, manifest dreams when you think, um, you know, the secret. Think about mindset, think about affirmations and things like that. You can't sit in a chair and just positive think your way into something, manifest some sort of an outcome. You got to get up and get out and do something. You got to get the skills and you got to go apply. So the Bible is like anything that it requires a little bit more faith and a lot more faith than most, you know, other types of uh, material that you can read. Because, you know, a lot of people just read it; they they don't do anything with it. So unapplied knowledge, um, you know, is almost a problem. Right? There's tons of unapplied knowledge out there geniuses that are talented and they don't apply it. They don't do it. So parable of the talents, right? Whatever you have, whatever gifts you give, go out, you've got to cultivate that, you've got to use them, you've got to put out there in the marketplace or nothing is going to happen. I agree with that. I call it the law of action. Uh, it's you got you gotta you gotta put some work in because if there's no action, I mean yeah. it's so easy for people to understand, but I don't know where there's a gap that, you know, you got to do stuff. So, and, and I agree with you, uh, and people can make it, even if they had a nine to five job. I mean, I wouldn't call it a sacrifice. I call it a choice. I like, I like, I like to, a nine to five individual should choose to work from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. building their own business. They should choose to work on the weekends because if, if your goals and desires are strong enough, then what's the difference between a Monday and a Sunday? Right. To me, there's no difference. Sun comes up, sun goes down. So to me, it's like that's an arbitrary name that we give it to, but every day is a new day. And there is no, I mean, if you look at it in the animal kingdom, they don't have Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. It's totally 
man-made completely for us to be organized and have organization. There's nothing wrong with it. But a lot of people confuse that, that, oh, just because it's Saturday and Sunday, I shouldn't do this. Or they feel guilty that they're not doing that. They're not doing those activities with their with their family. But I'm like, okay, so if you're not successful, how bad your family would pay the price for it? Because you're not successful. So would you rather choose a Saturday and Sundays to work? Now, obviously, you will get to a point where you don't have to if you don't want to. That's totally fine. That's having those choices and options. And I'm cool with that. But I just find it funny where people, the business, the business owner is not making money. But if he opened more longer Saturday and Sunday, that could be the difference between him being profitable and not profitable. Yeah. So that to me is like, it's so simple. Why are you not doing it? Yeah, it's a, you know I love it. It's the law of action versus the law of attraction, and you know that's kind of a, a law of attraction. You just manifest in something, and you think about it, and it's just going to show up. Now you got to get out and take the action, and you got to do what it takes. And you know that's the sacrifice I'm talking about. You know, instead of going out and playing golf, or going to the movies, or hanging out, you're taking care of business, and you're you're doing to get there, and you can start part time. You know, with a lot of people. Um, you know, I always had a corporate job early on before 1997. So I went in the Navy in uh, 1985, 89, and I worked jobs until 1997. So from 89 to 97, I, I had regular jobs and I had a couple of side businesses. So I always had a side business while I had a job. So you're right. On Saturday and Sunday, I wasn't on the golf course. I wasn't, you know, I'm a surfer, a long surfer. I wasn't at the beach. I wasn't surfing. I was out working during periods of my life, you know, until I got to the point to where I could be on the beach and surf if I want to. And then as an entrepreneur, you know, with my company uh, and my businesses, you know, to me, it's not work. You know, what I do is what I love. Passion is what I was created to do. That's really what's the ultimate, you know, I believe. finally figure out what it is you were created to do and you start doing it and that's everything opens up. That's when the world opens up to you. Opens up to you, it gets easier. And then you know that you're in alignment with what you were created to do. Because we are all creators. As entrepreneurs, it's a creative, a creative thing. It's a creative business, a creative fortune, creating opportunity, or something, and creating something out of nothing. Entrepreneurs do, and um, you know. So if you're gonna embark, you've got to feed that creative, you know, force in your mind, and you've got to tap into what it was you were created to do, which is what do you love, passionate about? What do people ask for your help with? You know, what is it that you're constantly, you know, uh, helping others do you want to serve? Who do you love? You know, who, who's your audience, your ideal client? Who are you passionate about? You know, those are the types of things that you can kind of figure out as an entrepreneur. And then, you know, it's just a business model. You don't care, but it's a great business model, and you build it, build it and move on, right? So, uh, you know, it's a couple different Love ways. it, love it. Greg, how do people find you? So gregdickerson.com, all my information is on there. And then, of course, I'm on Instagram, YouTube, all the social media platforms. The Greg Dickerson. Love it. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning, this afternoon. Hopefully, we'll be able to do more. Definitely stay safe out there. Yeah, you too now. Thank you for having me. You got it. Talk to you soon.